Flat Earthers, we know so much more about the globe than the people who believe in the globe. That was a very bold statement from a Flat Earth fool. As you understand, this fool will be today's topic. As you see on the screen, once again I will have a look at the Flat Earth Fool, Aloha from Florida. And in this video he confronts two friends that are, as he called them, Globers. And do you think he did win that discussion? No, of course not. It will be a dumpster fire. Prepare yourself for a real dumpster fire. Good morning. Aloha from Florida. Good morning, science and reality denier. So I'm going to talk about one truth, two friends, and three questions. One, two, three. The one truth is the Earth is an enclosed electrical topographical stationary plane. You believe it is, but it is not, and you have never shown any type of evidence for your claims. Fact. Truth. Two friends, both of them are ball believers. Both of them are educated in the world system or the government indoctrination camps. One of them is a pilot. I spoke to him yesterday, face to face. Poor man that have to deal with a stupid flat earther. He believes the earth is a sphere. He regurgitated his indoctrination. He reminded me how well he did in school. For those of you who have people who bring up this argument on how smart they were in school, remember this. They assume that what they learned in school is true. It's quite funny that this fool in other videos pointing out that flat earthers are so well educated. He was talking about taboo conspiracies, exams and so on. And now suddenly school don't mean anything. They did not question what they were taught to believe. They did not question what they had to memorize and regurgitate onto a test in order to pass, in order to be told that they were smart. Flat Earthers want us to cherry pick what we believed about the things we are learning in school, universities and so on. So my one friend, I'll call him friend one, he is a pilot with a very large airline, probably one of the best pilots and probably one of the most highly paid pilots on the earth. I'm quite sure that he's not one of the best paid because the best paid commercial pilots are working in airlines based in the Middle East. He thinks there's gravity. I asked him a question which I'll share with you in a few minutes. Um, and a few other things about flying in his plane. I think he was a little surprised that I knew what I knew about airplanes. I'm quite sure that you don't know much about airplanes. And I even quoted my friend, Brett, who was an aeronautical engineer and some of his things. And he just had to say, well, blah, 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 gravity, blah, 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 satellites. And of course, he's correct. Satellite is a great proof of the globe. We look at a war where they installed the GPS antennas on airplanes. Here you have an installation guide. Let's zoom in on this part. GPS antennas must be mounted on the top of the aircraft. This is very easy to look up. And if we lived on a flat earth and the GPS signals came from antennas at the ground, why would they place the antennas in the top of the aircraft? Yeah, I know. He never looked into it. When I told him the Earth was flat a year or two ago, he just immediately, his cognitive dissonance kicked in. He went looking for confirmation bias and has beliefs and opinions that the Earth is a sphere. He has never researched reality. One of you have never researched reality, and that one is you. I am quite sure that he gave you a lot of examples of things in the airplane that only works on the globe. But did you listen? Of course not. 
Friend number two, I've talked about him a couple times. He is a science teacher for 25 years now, I believe, teaching kids pseudoscience nonsense about the earth. Again, he'd never looked into it. I have been asking him for three years to give me one proof for the globe. Of course, he hasn't done it. If he is a science teacher, I'm quite sure that he gave you a lot of examples of things that wouldn't work on a flat earth. But you refuse to listen. You refuse to understand science and reality. You are a science denying and reality denying flat earth fool. And we know why. Because there is no proof for the globe. There are so many proofs for a globe, but where are your proofs for your flat earths? You flat earthers even can't agree on what gravity is. You don't have a working map. I can make a long list. There is no flat earth and you have no proofs. So that's uh, one truth, earth is flat, two friends, one's a pilot, one's a science teacher. They both are believing and sharing their opinions. Oh, this is the other thing about both of them. They both get visibly disturbed, angry on their face. <laughs> My whole conversation yesterday, I was happy, I was calm, I was smiling intentionally throughout the whole conversation and my other friend was getting visibly disturbed and angry in his facial expressions. Uh, the other friend hasn't talked to me in months now. The last thing I said to him, him is, look bro, you're getting mad at me for telling you the truth instead of being mad at the institutions that are lying to you and lying to children everywhere. And you are so incredibly stupid, so you don't understand why your friend, the teacher, gets angry at you. You are basically telling him that he are lying to the children. Oh dear. If I was him, I wouldn't talk to you either. So that's the two friends. And then the three questions. Here's the one question I have asked both of these friends. This is a question that science should be able to answer easily. It should be settled science, but the scientific community cannot answer this question. At what scale does the natural physics of a large body of water change from being observably, measurably, and repeatably perfectly flat level to displaying convexity on its surface? Look at a pond or a pool or a lake or an ocean. Everything when it comes to water uh, in a large body of water is observably, measurably, and repeatably flat. We are told to believe that the earth is a sphere with a almost 25,000 mile circumference, an almost 4,000 mile radius. So that means the claim is that at some scale, water stops or the physics of water magically changes from being flat and level to being curved, being convex on the surface. At what scale can you see that and measure that? At what scale? What a stupid question. You don't understand the globe at all. How much it curves depends on the distance. On a lake, you have a small, small curve, very hard to measure. On a bigger lake, it's easier to measure it and so on. Nothing? No answer? Why? Because the natural physics of water does not change, regardless of scale. Try to understand the model you're trying to debunk. The Earth is flat. So that's one question. At what scale do the natural physics of water change from being observably, measurably, repeatably flat to displaying convexity on its surface? The next question is, at what altitude does gravity lose its hold on something and allow it to float in space? All the space missions we've had, <laughs> all the uh, ISS spacewalks we've had. At what altitude does the gravity of the Earth lose its hold on something and allow it to float? That, that should be settled science, right? You obviously haven't studied anything about things you try to debunk. Do you understand why the ISS stays up there? Why the crew is weightless? It's held to the Earth by gravity and they are in zero G because of 
the ISS is constantly falling and the Earth is moving away so it don't hit Earth. What force do you think holds the Moon on a constant distance from Earth? So, okay, the other one is the third question. At what altitude can you see and measure the alleged curvature of the Earth? There are videos and images from high altitude balloons where you have not distorting lenses used that shows curvature. But you refuse to believe it. If you take an image with a great deal of the horizon visible, you can compress it so you can see the curvature on quite low altitudes. Lots and lots of rocket launches. 50 miles, 60 miles. Now, you, people think they go further than that, but they don't. 70 miles is like maximum that anything has ever been away from the surface of our flat and stationary Earth. You and a friend, if you have any friends left, can measure the distance to ISS, for instance, if you observe it from two different locations at the same time. You can use math and calculate its speed and the distance to it. But you're a flat earther, so of course you don't want to do any real observations. But this should be settled science too. At what altitude can you see and measure the alleged curvature of the Earth? Where are the evidence for your flat Earth? Where is any images on the ice wall? Why don't you have any map? Why do also radar have a horizon? I can make a long list with questions to you that you can't answer. All three of these questions prove the Earth is flat. Your three questions proves that you don't understand the model you're trying to debunk. It also proves that you are an ignorant fool that don't listen to any evidence at all. You believe in something that you have no proofs for. Oh dear. And stationary because you cannot answer them with any true science. Observable, measurable, repeatable science cannot answer any one of these three questions. Science that proves that we live on a globe. You call it pseudoscience. But where is the science backing up your silly claims about a stationary flat Earth? So the one truth is the Earth is flat. I have two friends who get angry when I bring up flat Earth because they can't give any proof and I won't buy the bullshit that they are trying to regurgitate to me because I've actually looked into it and considered many, many, many different angles of the globe. And still your free questions proves that you don't understand the globe model at all. In fact, it's weird, isn't it? As flat earthers, we know so much more about the globe than the people who believe in the globe. In this video with your three questions, you've proven the opposite. <laughs> uh, so the two friends and then those three questions. Uh, think about them, use them, uh, ask your friends who still believe in the ball those three questions. See if they can answer. I bet they can. Have a good day. God bless. Yes, ask those three questions if you want to sound like a science and reality denying fool. Oh dear. That was really, really stupid. Once again, Aloha from Florida have proven one thing and one thing only. He is a big flat earth fool. Oh dear. And the funny part is that he thinks he's smarter than the rest of us. Thank you everybody helping me helping Ukraine. All ad revenues and revenues from the channel goes for buying drones for Ukraine. And if you donate using PayPal, the money will go to buying Kamikaze drones. So once again, a big thank you. That was all I had for you this time. Like, subscribe, become a member or why not come back next time I'm showing a video. Have a nice day, take care. Bye.
Ooh.